Hi, welcome back to yet another session. In this specific session, I'm going to walk you through on inventory management. Inventory management gathers momentum across many aspects of day-to-day -day business operation. You might have seen there are plenty of organizations which have poor inventory management. Ultimately, this results in hampering the business growth, diminishes the customer satisfaction. Not only that increases the operating cost also. On the flip side of the coin, you would have seen there are certain organizations with excellent inventory management practices tend to increase customer satisfaction. They decide which models are preferred by the customer and how much of product to stock it also is considered important. And talking about inventory management, first level, an organization needs to talk about how to control the inventory within an organization. This inventory control systems can be used at three different levels. At the very first level, we are more interested in identifying how much of assessment that needs to be done. At the second level, it's all about how much of a replenishment should happen and when this replenishment should also happen. In talking about this inventory management, there are going to be plenty of costs associated. In making this decision, there are two important questions that needs to be addressed. In this session, I will walk you through on the important decision and then you will understand where to use it and where not to use it. In talking about the inventory management, you have to answer two questions. How much to order and when to order. When to order talks about the timing decisions and when to order talks about the quantity decision. These are the two premises of inventory management. If you know what exactly you are looking forward, accordingly you can choose the model. In terms of how much to order, all the time we talk about the quantity decisions. In talking about the quantity decisions, we have gotten three important models here. The basic premise is economic order quantity. We call this as EOQ model. The second method is economic production model. And the third one is economic order quantity with quantity discount model. These are the three models that we have gotten. In this specific video, I'm going to cover on the first model on the basic economic order quantity model and in the subsequent videos EPQ and EOQ with quantity discounts also will be taken into consideration. Even before talking about the assumptions and then moving on to the numerical, you must understand what are the components of a total cost. When you are purchasing the product there are going to be plenty of costs that is involved but three major costs that you are going to have is the very first level the cost of the product which in other term known as the purchasing cost at the second level, you're going to have the cost of ordering. The cost of ordering in other term is known as a setup cost also. When we go to the numerical and the formula, you could see these terminologies are used differently. And at the third level, we have gotten carrying cost or the holding cost. Then subsequently, you would see the rest of the other cost that's going to come up. For our EOQ model, we are going to consider the first three costs only. What is the purchase cost? the carrying cost and the inventory holding cost. The cost of item is already predetermined. So we do not have much space to discuss about that. But the carrying cost and the ordering cost will be decided by the organization. As discussed, we have gotten two important costs, which is carrying cost. The other one is ordering cost. When it comes to the carrying cost, how would you calculate? And what is the logic behind it? If you know the logic behind it, it becomes extremely easy. Now, let's say your entire month demand is going to be 400 units. So I'm taking the quantity is entire monthly demand is 400 units, which means your weekly demand is 100 units. It's up to you to take the products every week 100 quantity, or you can take two weeks once 200 quantity, or three weeks once you can take 300, or put together for the entire month you can purchase. But the disadvantage of purchasing all the products together, you're locking in a bulk amount of money. For every unit that you're going to do, certainly there is going to be a cost associated with the specific product. Now, let's say you are purchasing 100 quantity, which is the carrying cost. You are taking it for 100 quantity and you are going to consume it in a week's time. Only for that particular point, you would have the carrying cost. Now, imagine you have at that time taken 200 units. First week you are consuming it and the rest of the 100 units can be consumed after the first week only. 
out of the 200, 100 for the first week, 100 for the second week. So automatically the cost goes up. Now, similarly, you could see that for 300 units, first week 100 units, second week another 100 units, only by third week. And if you are going to purchase all the quantity together for 400, then this is going to be the case. In the first week, this is the carrying cost, second week, third week, and fourth week. As the quantity increases, the cost also increases. This is the reason in a retail store of season sale after a specific point of a time. If they hold it more, it is going to eat away the cost. And as a result of that, they give you lots of discount. So we have taken the quantity over here and the annual cost for carrying it. If you are taking it for monthly, then it's a monthly carrying cost. For ordering cost also, we are taking quantity and the annual cost. So we are taking the cost and then we are taking the quantity over here. We are mapping the cost also. Cost we have gotten and the quantity. Now look at the specific point. It is up to you to take the quantity that you are in need of. One we have seen, the more the quantity, more is the carrying cost. On the other hand, now you would say that, now let me go ahead for only one week, 100 units I'm taking. So ordering cost, I have gotten 100. But what happens again for the second week also, you have to go ahead and take another 100 units. For third week, another 100 units. Fourth week, which means you are making four times order. At a single go, I'm placing all 400 units in a single order. So I'm going to incur the ordering cost only once. Now let's say next level, I'm going to go for 300 units at a one slot and the rest of the other units at a later stage. When I say rest of the other units at this particular level, I can go it at a later stage, which means twice I'm going to place the order. Similarly, look at it at the next level. I'm going to place 200. As a time being, I'm placing 200 orders. But again, I'm going to place yet another order. And simultaneously, you could see for every 100 units, I'm going to place it at a later stage. Look at this. At the specific level, I'm placing the order all at one go. As a result of that, my ordering cost is only for one unit. At the second level, look at it. I'm going to place the order. Now I have placed it for 300 units. Again, at a later stage, I'm going to pay it for another unit. Then as a result of that, my ordering cost is slightly increasing. At the next level, I may take 100 units and then 50 units, another 50 units, I can take it. So as a result of that, three times I'm going to place order and the cost is going to go up. And at this specific level, I'm going to place it for Four times I'm going to place 100. Every lot is going to be of 100 quantity. Four times in a month I'm going to place in, which is going to incur the cost. If you look at this, the cost is inversely proportional. Higher the number of the order, higher is the cost. Less the number of the order, lesser is the cost. This is the logic behind it. To calculate the carrying cost, we are going to use certain notation. Depending on what has been taught to you, this is going to change. In certain cases, for carrying cost, you would have given CC and ordering cost, you are given CO. Go ahead and follow that. In certain cases, you would have been taking H for the carrying cost and S for the holding cost. If that happens to be the case, take it. At the end of the day, just have the logic in place and use whatever the notation that you're going to need. In. Now, for the carrying cost, what happens is we are going to order the quantity. Based on the quantity, we have it on hand. To that, we are going to have the carrying cost. So as a result of this, I'm going to take quantity divided by two. You would want to understand on what basis I have taken this. Generally, when we talk about the quantity, we always talk about the average quantity. Now, let's say we have gotten 400 units. So we have ordered 400 units. 400 units at a single order you have ordered. This is the highest of all. And you are going to carry the product for four weeks. We have gotten 100, 200, and 300, your carrying cost. The moment when the order is going to come, the point is at zero. And the maximum is you're going to have 400. You cannot carry the cost until the 400 units because in the first week, you have already exhausted 100 units. So this particular cost is out. Second week also, you have exhausted out of the 100 unit, which put together 200 units you have exhausted. So, so there is no carrying cost at this particular point. In the third week, another 100 units put together, 100 into three weeks, 
300. So there is no carrying cost also. Only because of this reason, we take an average quantity. For calculating the average quantity, we take maximum value plus minimum inventory. Maximum inventory plus minimum inventory divided by 2. The maximum inventory is the order that you are placing. In this case, it's 400. Plus minimum inventory is the point at which it is going to come in. At the beginning of a period, you can, for your understanding, 0 divided by 2. So what happens is, we call this as a maximum quantity plus minimum quantity divided by the average. So what happens? The minimum quantity is going to be 0. So the maximum quantity plus 0 divided by 2. Ultimately, this gives q by 2. This is the logic behind getting it. Minimum quantity is at any point of a time, it becomes 0. But as we move on to the rest of the other model in a newspaper vendor model, this is going to slightly change it. But for EOQ, we call this as a q by 2. So we have taken q by 2, average quantity into the holding cost or the carrying cost. So we are using the notation as H, this is for the carrying cost. When it comes to ordering cost, how will you place an order? You need certain people doing the work. Then you have to telephone somebody. You need to prepare certain documents and lots of other cost is involved, which is called as a setup cost or ordering cost. How, on what basis you're going to order the product? You have gotten a demand. Based on that, you're going to order the quantity based on the demand. So demand by the quantity into multiplied by the setup cost or the ordering cost. In simple term, this is the formula that you have got. It. Higher is your quantity, higher is the number of order, higher is the ordering cost. Lesser is the number of one order, lesser is the cost of it. This is the logic. Now at the next level, what I'm going to do, I'm going to superimpose both the charts to calculate how, what is the total cost over here. I have taken up one chart. And this denotes the carrying cost. And we have seen the ordering cost is inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. So this is carrying cost and this is ordering cost. Ultimately, what we have to find out is we have to find a point where the cost is going to be minimum and the quantity is also going to be minimum quantity that we need to order with the minimum cost. Wherever you see the intersection point, that is going to be your economic order quantity at this particular price. This is the minimum quantity and this is the minimum cost that you are going to have. it. So we have gotten the quantity and then we have gotten the cost. Now you want to understand what happens beyond this specific point. Now let's say at this particular point, if you go ahead and order, the carrying cost goes up and further down up the level, the carrying cost goes up. Now, what happens after this specific point for this curve? The ordering cost is going to go up at this specific level. So we are interested to find out what is the minimum point where the quantity and the cost is going to go minimum. Otherwise, the moment it has crossed that particular point, your ordering cost goes up or your carrying cost is going to go up, which is going to destroy the basic premise of having an inventory management. This is where your total cost curve is going to be. So for calculating the total cost, since we have superimposed the chart, this is here, EOQ point, the minimum quantity, and at the minimum cost that we are going to incur. Now, what is the carrying cost formula? Carrying cost is Q by 2 quantity, average quantity, multiplied by the holding cost, plus demand by the quantity, multiplied by the ordering cost. Higher the number of orders placed, Higher is the ordering cost. This is what is the basic premise of calculating the total cost. So you have seen carrying cost formula, ordering cost formula, then the total cost formula. For calculation of a EOQ, this is going to be slightly lengthy process in terms of a differentiation, which I don't want to do it. So it is going to be square root of demand into the setup cost divided by the holding cost. Square root of 2 demand into the setup cost, otherwise it's the ordering cost. If you are having the logic of following with CO and CS, you can take two into the demand of the ordering cost divided by the carrying cost. This wise also you can take it. And I'm sure now you have gotten a clarity regarding how this EOQ formula works in. 
I'm sure you are able to follow me for the numerical. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Karpakam signing off. See you all in the next video. Good day.